Hey everybody, Steve here at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in the Hollywood Hills. And as you can see, it's a really foggy morning. I'm sitting here in the parking lot waiting for the cemetery to open. I'm here about a half hour early. It doesn't open until about 8 o'clock this morning, but it's so dark and foggy right now, it looks like it's 8 o'clock at night. So while I'm sitting here in my car waiting for the gates to open, I thought I would tell you the story about the young man who I'm here to visit today. On May 29th, 1979... 13-year-old Thomas Lundgren was hitchhiking here in the Los Angeles area. And back then, back in the 1970s, hitchhiking was pretty popular with just about everybody. Most people considered it pretty safe and an easy way to get around town. And it wasn't really unusual for people to hitchhike. Now, 13 does seem a little bit young to me to be hitchhiking, but, you know, back in the 1970s, it was a much simpler, easier, much more innocent time. So that probably wouldn't have been considered that unusual. Unfortunately, on that fateful day, he happened to be picked up in a van by William Bonin and Vernon Butts. Bonin, you may remember, went on to be known as the Freeway Killer. He drove a van, which he turned into a deathmobile. All of the doorknobs on the inside of the van had been removed, so once he lured his victims into the van, there was no way for them to, to escape. He also had an accomplice. On that day, his accomplice was Vernon Butts, and later it was discovered that not only did he have one accomplice, but during the time of his reign of terror here in the Los Angeles area, he had four accomplices. It's almost impossible to imagine that he could find one person to help kill these boys and young men, but to find four? How is that even possible? It turns out that Lundgren was his very first victim, or at least the first victim that Bonin was charged with the murder of. Now, Bonin was a, a known sexual predator and child molester, and again, incomprehensibly, he had been arrested a couple of times before and set free. So it's not known exactly how many boys and young men he killed over the years, but it's estimated that it was at least 21. Eventually, once he was caught, he was charged with the murders of 14, but the total number will probably never be known for sure. But sadly, Thomas Lundgren was his first, or at least the first murder for which he was charged. Once Bonin had his victims inside the van where they could not escape, he then raped, tortured, and brutally murdered them, and then dumped them either on the side of the freeway or near a freeway, usually without their clothes. And it wasn't just one freeway. Bonin chose different freeways all throughout the Los Angeles and Orange County area. Bonham was a 32-year-old Downey, California truck driver, and he went on his serial-killing murder spree between 1979 and 1980. And his victims, ranging in age from, I believe, 12 years old to 19 years old, were usually hitchhikers, or they were waiting at a bus stop, or they were lured into the van with the promise of drugs or alcohol. One of the boys was even just waiting at a bus stop, catching a ride to Disneyland and Bonin offered him a ride to Disneyland. Sadly, they never arrived. Bonin was finally captured when one of his accomplices turned him in, and on February 23rd, 1996, he was executed at San Quentin State Prison here in California by lethal injection. He had been on death row for many years and was 49 years old at the time of his death. His parents apparently refused to pick up his body, so, he was cremated, and his ashes were scattered over the Pacific Ocean. His accomplice, Vernon Butts, was also arrested, but was found strangled in his hospital jail cell, and his death was ruled a suicide. Although reportedly, from what I read, his attorney had his doubts about the actual cause of death. Butts was 23 years old when he died on January 11, 1981. The killers had met when they both worked for the same trucking company. As for their other victims, they're buried in a number of different cemeteries around Southern California. And I'm going to see how many of their grave sites I can find and share with you as well, but I'll do those in a separate video. But for today, I just wanted to start with the first victim, Thomas Lundgren. His Find a Grave memorial page didn't have a lot of information about his life, so if any of you happen to know any more about his short life, please share with us in the comments section. I'm sure everyone watching would like to know more about Thomas Lundgren. He only lived 13 years, but I'm sure he had family and friends, hobbies and interests, just like all of us, and it'd be nice to know a little bit more about him. 
This week, I want to give a shout out and a very big thank you to my newest Patreon supporters, June Bromley and Luke Gregory. Thank you, June and Luke, for your kind donations to this channel. They mean a lot and are very appreciated. And thank you, too, to all of you who have taken the time to subscribe, to leave comments, and to give these videos a thumbs up. That means a lot and helps a lot, too. So, thanks for joining me today on this very sad visit to the cemetery, and I hope to see you next time.